don't know what to make of this one. It's common practice for video essays on YouTube to have some kind of central idea that is expounded upon in the preamble. A thesis that allows your viewers to settle in and have reasonable expectations about what they are here to witness. But today, I want you to go into this without knowing a goddamn thing. Like I did. For the sake of complete transparency, I chose today's subject, Puppet Princess, on a complete lark. I didn't know anything about it, and I had no expectations, other than it was going to be another boilerplate ninja anime, judging by the artwork on the back of the box. So I popped it in and began watching it. Now, the runtime of this anime is about 40 minutes long. It took me an hour and a half to watch it. Why? Because I had to keep pausing it to give my brain enough time to catch its breath. There are very few times in which I'm left speechless about what I watch for Anime Abandoned, and Puppet Princess is one such time. But for now, that is all I'm going to tell you, because, again, I need you to experience this like I did, so that you can see exactly where I'm coming from with this. Pack your bags, ladies and gentlemen, because you are in for one hell of a head trip. This is Puppet Princess. All right, these are my exact first thoughts while I was watching this. Hey, was this made by the same guy who made Ninja Resurrection? I mean, they look similar enough, don't they? And the answer is... maybe? The listed character designer and director is a longtime animator and storyboard artist Hirotoshi Takaya, who only directed two anime, Puppet Princess and Project Arms. Thing is, though, Takaya isn't listed anywhere on the Anime News Network page for Ninja Resurrection, not for character design, and certainly not for director. If you remember correctly, the director of Ninja Resurrection was Yasunori Arata, the same director behind Sin the Movie. <laughs> and Legend of the Blue Wolves, or as it's known here in the States, Hot Space Cowboys. However, one of the listed names for animation director is Hirotoshi Takayama. Who is Takayama? Personally, I don't think he exists. His Anime News Network profile has only one listed credit, which is unheard of in the anime industry. No one works on one title and that's it, and certainly not as something with seniority like a director. You usually have to work up to a title like that. Secondly, there is no other proof of Takayama's existence outside of this paltry entry on ANN. Then again, Takaya's name appears nowhere on the actual credits of Ninja Resurrection. And neither does Takayama's name for that matter, so yeah, your guess is as good as mine. However, during all of this thought process, one important detail escaped me. And as I continued to watch Puppet Princess, it finally dawned on me. If you're watching something that's reminding you of Ninja Resurrection... My father has heard me and granted my prayer! My revenge! You're watching something that's fucked. We begin the story proper with a clan of ninjas being tailed by god knows what and holy hot damn why the hell is nearly every other shot in this heap an extreme close up? Was Takaya a big Sergio Leone fan? God, those faces. It's like everyone was dosed with Joker venom. <laughs> Love it's hard to keep track of what is happening since the anime insists on assaulting the viewer with extreme close-ups of nightmare faces over and over again, but in between this chaos, we learn that the ninjas are fighting something altogether not human, and certainly quite deadly. She doesn't quite chop his head off. She makes a Pez dispenser out of him. Well, that's certainly one way to open your anime. But then the narration kicks in and informs all of us that we're about to waste our goddamn time. This story is set in a much more remote land and is about a ruler who is of far less significance. There, you can see her now. If she's of less significance, then why the hell are we paying attention to her? Basically, the narrator just came in and did this. It don't matter. None of this matters. What is this? Oh, so important princess doing in the mountains? And why is she carrying a comically oversized basket on her back? Is she cosplaying her favorite 80s B-movie for the eight or so people who will get this joke? Well, why don't we let her clumsily explain it? 
My name is Rangiku, and I'm the youngest daughter of Hisashige Ayawatari, who was defeated last year by Sadayoshi Karimata's army. I've come here seeking Sir Kato, who I've heard is the best ninja in all of Japan and a master of magic. <laughs> do I even really need to be here? Seriously, do I? We meet that one weird-ass goat-eyed ninja from earlier who informs the princess that not only is the ninja she's looking for dead, but she's in enemy territory, and right as he says this, enemy ninjas bamf into being. You won't get away! I must be hearing things, because I just heard that ninja make a warrior skronk. But have no fear, the princess has backup in the form of gigantic puppets that she controls through a, frankly, ridiculous apparatus that has her controlling said puppets through fine strings attached to rings that she manipulates with her fingers and toes. I'm sorry, but your attempts to make puppetry badass just makes it even lamer. I mean... They're marionettes, for God's sake! That was the entire joke in Team America! <laughs> oh sure, they're gigantic marionettes, but the awe that's inspired from their imposing figures is completely undone whenever the anime cuts to the princess making jazz hands with her little piggies. Or would it be jazz feet? Why am I even asking this? Bottom line, puppetry is not badass, because the last thing on your mind when you think ass kicker is howdy doody. The ninjas are scared off, but the princess reveals that while she's controlling the puppets, she's a sitting duck and begs the assistance of Godai's white ninja here to protect her while she seeks revenge against the lord who killed her father and took his puppets. And... <sighs> Alright, this is going to be hard to convey because I'm jumping around the OVA, but... While all of this is happening, the anime insists on interrupting the action scenes with weird slapstick comedy. Oh my, she tripped. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Need I remind you, this is how the anime started. And this is the level of humor we're dealing with. Please, sir. Um, Sir Monajiro. My name is Monajiri! This just compounds the weird parallels between Puppet Princess and Ninja Resurrection, as it too was a gorehound bloodbath that had weird digressions into ill-advised comedy. <laughs> all thinking because I was thinking it too are we going to get Japanese Jesus screwing a woman so she can get pregnant and give birth to Satan well I'm going to cut the tension and say no we're not going to get that but We do get the princess bathing at a water hole, you know, that old chestnut, and then Godai's white ninja stalks her and... yeah, you all know where this is going. What's wrong? <sighs> Ain't you gonna put up a fight? I don't know what it is you plan to do with me, but I'll do what you want if it will motivate you to help me. Excuse me? A baking powder? Or do you? Yeah, not really sure what to make of this. They obviously wanted to play this sexual assault for the yucks, considering Godai's facial expressions here, but then they swerve us by having her give the go-ahead. And they are not done! How'd you get that scar? My father, he loved puppets very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I put it to you that the worst possible answer to the question, how did you get that scar, is my father loved puppets very much. You want to know how I got this scar? My father, he loved puppets very much. Oh God, kill me now! My father created his ultimate masterpiece. A puppet that could move on its own. Okay, I'll bite. What does this have to do with your scar? 
the springs and the living puppet my father created were made from the skin of children. You hear that, Five Nights at Freddy's? Not only does this puppet move on its own, but it's also made from the skin of children. You ain't shit! Also, what the fuck?! Yup, flayed alive by her own dad when she was five. Just so he could build... PUPPETS! The same things that star in the goddamn Thunderbirds! This does not warrant, nor earn, the bloody, try-hard bullshit. Especially when you consider that her dad is dead. Yeah, another lord pimped in and destroyed her kingdom and took her dad's puppets. While she looked like Ida Lowry from Brazil. So it's not really revenge that she's looking for. She just wants to stop these puppet terminators from taking over Japan like some feudal Skynet. And stop the lord from abducting children for their skin. This is... Without a doubt, the most over-the-moon evil villain I have ever come across in anime with a fucking bullet. But the true moment of madness comes when Godai's white ninja has a near PTSD episode recounting that he saw kids getting marched into Lord Shithole's castle to be harvested for their skin. It was hell inside that castle. Oh, well, I guess I will go with you tomorrow. Oh, God, this tonal whiplash is fucking with my mind. You two are talking about children being round up like cattle and tanned of their hides so they can make war machine puppets, and you revert back to unfunny shtick about the princess not realizing she was about to get raped? You don't have the slightest idea what I came here to do, do you? No, I'm sorry I don't. But whatever it is, I'll do my best. You're not making this easy for me, you know. Whoppity smack daddy girl. Whoppity smack daddy girl. Oh, and let us not forget the fact that the princess is still naked during all of this, and has been for the last seven minutes of screen time. The entire anime is only 42 minutes long, counting opening and credits. So the princess has been naked for over a sixth of the entire running time. That's hentai numbers. And after that... Onslaught on our sanities, what does the anime follow that up with? Please stop hitting him! I beg you! Who the hell are you? My childhood is lacking an accident! Hey, lady, I don't like that tone you're using. A nameless henchman nearly beats a crippled kid to death. Why not just have him punt a puppy into a paper shredder while you're at it? But don't worry, the princess and Godai's arrived to set the kids free. Too bad they couldn't get there before Tiny Tim and his mom here were given a blanket party. And what, no banana peels for the soldiers to slip on? No cream pies lying around to start a pie fight? Puppet princess... What are you? And talk about getting the lead up, because after that oh-so-necessary scene, they're already at the castle doors, and they're not waiting for an invitation, sacrificing two different puppets to get inside, where they're met with the welcoming committee. Listen, Sir Manajuru, I know of a way we can win this. When I give the signal, you must leap behind them. That expression. What does it mean? Goat eyes, I've been asking that question since this anime began, and all I've got is, I just stepped on a Lego brick and hot damn does my foot feel like it's on fire, or this chili shit that's brewing is gonna come out so good. Turns out these puppets were also somehow rigged to explode, and the princess reveals that this journey was basically a suicide mission where all she hoped to accomplish was to destroy her father's puppets. Godai's verbally slapped the shit out of her, though, and the two set their targets on the big baddie, not her dad. Again, why is this guy even here? What was so wrong with the princess rising up against her tyrannical father and saving the kingdom from a child flaying monster? Ah, no, he's got to be killed off by this scumbucket, who is also a child flaying monster. There's just no rhyme or reason to this. But that might just be par for the course because the ending fight scene is utter nonsense with Godai's revealing that he's not just some ordinary ninja. The truth is that his techniques were so astounding that he frightened away all the lords. 
They were so afraid that he would end up killing them that not a single one would hire him. So he gave it all up and became a drifter! Okay. And Lord Shithole revealing that he has somehow fused himself to the automated puppet, thus making its autonomous functionality completely pointless. So what the hell is this confusing batshit bowl of fruits and nuts supposed to lead up to? Well... Godai sends some shadow clones to distract Lord Shithole, leaving the princess an opening for the kill. How's this puppet controlled? I'm not a puppet. Oh, I get it. It thinks it's being smart. Oh, wait. Huh. Should I tell it? Yes, the puppet princess cuts her strings and she no longer has to be controlled by thoughts of revenge. And after the Lord dies a bloody, disarming, brutal death, we get one last callback to that near rape scene. Just forget whatever it was we talked about. That won't do at all. Do you wish to make me break my word and become a liar? Uh, no, but that was then and this is now. Well, I want to do anything you want me to do. If you save the world, we can do it in the asshole. I'll be right back. Rappity smackity do! God, this anime was just. Fuck! Even after sitting through this thankfully short anime, I'm still having trouble coming to terms with what the hell kind of thinking went into this. If they wanted to make a dour, bloody fuck humanity OVA, then just make one! Don't put in these weird, unfunny, pratfall-driven jokes that won't do anything but give your audience whiplash! But if I have to say something nice, it is quite the pitch-dark comedy. It's debatable over how much of these visceral contrasting scenes were intentional or just the result of tone deafness, but the end result is still a transgressive but hearty laugh. Granted, it does take a certain kind of person to find humor in Puppet Princess, outside of the terrible yuck yuck scenes. Still, I can rightfully say that I'll never forget my first time seeing Puppet Princess. Whether or not that's an endorsement is up to you. You know, it has been quite some time since I covered something this bloody. Reminds me of another title that I probably should have covered by now. Well, no time like the present. Till next time. <coughs>